Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool repair video for you today on this arcade game. We had a customer bring us by this Deer Hunting USA arcade game that the monitor is not working in. And I believe he said that he thinks that a power surge did something to it. So he believes that uh, lightning made the power go on and off or something and it stopped working. So we're going to see if that's what's up with it, or uh, if the monitor uh, simply has a blown fuse or something shorted or what is the deal. But I figured I'd film it because it's a nice little encapsulated video that might help you work on one of yours, okay? So this has a Hantarex Polo monitor in it, uh, which is an Italian company that made some pretty nice stuff. So this is one of the, uh, the popular monitors. Uh, from the 90s and I thought that somebody might have a Hanorex Polo that they're trying to repair and uh, need some help with it. So uh, we'll check it out and see if we can figure out what the deal is. The first thing I'm going to do is plug it up and see um, you know, if we get any kind of evidence or anything from it being plugged up. Now, I believe Joe told me that he already did, but let's see. Let's, let's take a look inside of it first. If you move one, um, before you plug it up, look inside of it to make sure everything looks like it's still in one in the right place. So this is a Hanter X Polo. It does look like all the capacitors have been replaced. So that's already been done, it already has a cap kit. It looks like it has a brand new flyback transformer. So that's good. Um, so we'll be on to trying to figure out what's next. Uh, I'm just looking for anything obvious. So the, all of the power comes in through this power supply which would have had a built-in circuit breaker. That is not tripped. Everything's cool. I don't know about that. Looks like that's alright. This is a kitted game. This was a uh, Lethal Enforcers cabinet. So originally this was a Lethal Enforcers arcade game. Now a Hanter X Polo does not necessarily need a uh, I'm still looking at stuff here. A Hanter X Polo does not necessarily need an isolation transformer. Um, but with that said I just noticed something interesting. I look down here. I've got a green and a red wire going to this transformer, the isolation transformer. And then these come out of it and provide the power for the monitor. Some monitors need an isolation transformer, some don't. Okay? But why do I have black wire. Okay, it's just the way it's wired. Okay, so see how we have a white, green, and black? When it goes through this, the white turns into a green, and the black turns into a red. So green and red are your AC, and those are the ones that are plugged in. Okay, so that's fine. It just looked weird that the green was plugged in, but the black wasn't. All right, so some monitors do not need an isolation transformer. This is one of them, but since it's already in the cabinet, it's just been wired into the, the isolation transformer even though it doesn't need it. A lot of times these had, these this particular cabinet had a, a Wells Gardner K7000 in it. All right, um, I believe it does have a fuse. Uh, that is the fuse. Just looking at it, it looks fine, but you know you can't necessarily tell just by looking at it. All right, so everything looks looks fine just for the the, the eyeball test. So we're ready to plug it up just to see what it does. It probably probably won't hear anything from the monitor, but you may hear uh, the game actually come up, or I mean the monitor may make a bunch of noise and do all kinds of crazy stuff. Okay, so uh, maybe the power is turned off. There 
go. Okay. So listen. Do you hear that? Tick, 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 tick. Okay. So that is a dead giveaway of what's going on. Let me see if the game actually is trying to come up too. Yeah, so the game is working. Where should we hunt today? Where should we hunt today? We're hunting a short today. All right, so that ticking is the monitor coming on, the high voltage of the monitor coming on, and then going, oh, wait a minute, I can't do that, and shutting back down, and then trying it again. Oh, wait a minute, I can't do that. You're hearing it turn on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off. Tick, 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 tick. And different monitors will do it at a different speed. Basically, it's trying to start and then shutting down, trying to start and shutting down, trying to start and shutting down. The reason that it won't start and stay up is because it's discovering that something's shorted. So it's coming up. It figures out something is shorted and shuts down, and then tries it again. Something shorted, shuts down. So there is a short somewhere on the on the uh, monitor board that is causing it uh, not to be able to do its thing. So we're going to have to pull the monitor out and uh, put it on the bench and see what we can figure out. All right, so we're going to pop it out now. I'll tell you, a lot of times and every time, pretty much, uh, my brother Joe just pulls the anode out and takes the thing out. You can get shocked by them if they're turned off, um, but it's only going to zap you like one time and it kind of feels like you put your finger in the wall, you know, in the wall socket. When I was a kid, we stuck forks in the wall socket like idiots. Don't do that. But uh, it does, you know, if you get hit by one of these, everybody says, oh, it can kill you and all that. Yeah, I guess it could kill you, but man, I'd be dead a long time ago if these things killed you every time they did that. <laughs> it's just a it's just a big shock. It's a big jolt. So you can you basically want to get the voltage out of the tube to the ground. So you can use a big screwdriver with a wire on it. So I've got a clip on one side, the clip's connected to the ground on the other side, and you just want to slide the screwdriver down under the the socket and touch the metal anode in there. The, the pin, the connect, the clip in there. Now, uh, I don't think it's actually going to even have any stored up charge, but we'll see. So you may hear a, a pop. Nothing. So it didn't have any charge because it's basically, it's the high voltage is not able to build up because it's coming up and then shutting down. Most of these have like a bleeder circuit in it, or I don't know what you would call it, where it bleeds off the high voltage. So since this one's never coming fully up right now, uh, it's not creating any high voltage. It's just as it's starting, it's shutting back down. Um, and then if it was to charge up the tube, once you turn it off, that charge would trickle out of the tube through the back through the flyback um, to where that after a few minutes there wouldn't be any charge at all. Some of them do it pretty much instantly within a few seconds. Um, but if something was wrong with that, or there was a problem with the flyback or something, it may not be able to do that. So uh, you can't count on that. But again, people make it like it's the end of the world. It's not that big of a deal. So I'm gonna take that loose. I've got to take the power loose. I have to disconnect this uh, uh, remote board. I have to take the yoke loose. Um, and then there will be a ground wire. We have some ground wires over here. I guess that's the degauss ring. I have to take the video loose. So I have to unplug some stuff. Most of this stuff will only go back in one position. Um, that yoke connector up there on a Hanner X, there's two of them, the, the green connector up there. If you put it in the wrong one, your picture will just be upside down. It won't hurt anything. Um, you just got it on the wrong setting. So I'm gonna unplug some stuff, carefully slide the neck board off the tube, and then we can go put it on the bench and uh, check out what's shorted. Okay, so here we go. So if you're working on one that's already been serviced, like it's recently had a cap kit, it's recently had a uh, transformer, you know, it's probably not going to be the flyback, although it may be. It's probably not going to be the caps, although it may be. 
And since it's coming up and then going off, coming up and going off, the fuse is fine because the fuse is just what provides the power. So it's obviously getting power or it wouldn't be doing that. Now, depending on which one, which model you have, uh, it may have a big, huge um, piece of metal that covers this side that needs to be taken off. And sometimes there's a plate on the bottom that needs to be taken off so you can service things. Over the years, those tend to get lost because somebody works on it and the thing gets thrown away. So yours may not have that like this one doesn't. Um, so what we're looking for is something that's shorted together. And you can't always see it, right? So a lot of times when it's ticking like that, you've got a problem with your hot, they call it, the horizontal output transformer. So on a Hanter X, this is it here. Okay, so there's three pins on the bottom. Oh, I see a little bit of a problem. I'll show you here in a second. There's three pins on the bottom that you can check uh, with a diode test. Okay, so we're just going to see if this thing is shorted. Let's see if our hot is shorted. It's a good place to start. Um, so you can connect with the... Uh, center pin and connect from it. These are there are three hot pins. So we're going to check from one to one of the other ones. It's a lot easier to do with one hand, I mean with two hands. Point four six five. So that's a regular voltage drop on like a transistor or a diode, and then 0.465 between the middle one and the other one. So, going from base to collector and base to emitter, we're getting 0.4. If it was shorted, so something is shorted. We know that because it's coming up, going down, coming up, coming down. So if it was shorted, one of those would be shorted from the middle, from the base to the collector or the base to the emitter. Now there's also, you can have a short from your collector to your emitter which would be the two outside ones in this case. And I'll bet that's shorted, but usually it's because there's an external resistor that's connected together on the board. You see how that's shorted? If you take this out, just going by experience, and obviously I never went to school for this, but if you take this out, you will find that those two pins are not shorted. But they test shorted in circuit because of other things on the board. So, and again, we're just talking about things specific to a Hanter X Polo. So I've just done that before and know that you can't test it in circuit because you get that short like it. But you can test from the center to the outside legs like we just did. And you saw we got 0.4. We didn't get a short. So our hot is actually not shorted. That's a good thing. Now another thing to look at is, see this capacitor here? It looks like it's been replaced, that Mylar one. So the solder for it is here and here. And if we test those two, if it'll cooperate, they're not shorted either. Right? From here to here is. I'm basically trying to test these caps here. A lot of times, if you have a short, it'll be one of these big caps here. So I'm testing those too. Just you find the two legs on the bottom, and you see if they seem shorted in circuit. If they do, you can remove them and, and test them out of circuit. But you kind of just poke around until you find something that seems shorted together that shouldn't be like a capacitor. If you test a resistor, it'll seem shorted because the resistor just resists, you know, voltage, and it may be really low. It may be. 0.2 ohms resistance, well that'll seem like a short on a diode test. So I'm going to keep looking around and see if I can find anything interesting and I'll get back to you when I do. Okay, so we have, uh, I can't find anything shorted on the thing, so here's what we've done. If you're, uh, th there's a test you can do where you can hook up a light bulb and stuff, we may have to do that later if this doesn't do it. The light, you can, I can't remember what you disconnect, but you can disconnect something and it hooks up a light bulb to the power supply. This side is the power supply. So you're trying to figure out if the problem is on the power supply side or if it's on the deflection side. So you can hook up a light bulb to tell that. Um, the reason you use a light bulb is because you need a load. 
So if I, if I unhook the power supply from the deflection side, you can measure the voltages, but they, they'll just keep charge, they'll just keep climbing if you don't have a load on it. So you need like a, something to use some of the power. So you can use a light bulb for that. Um, but it takes a little bit to hook it up and kind of a pain. So I always prefer just finding something with a multimeter. I can't find anything shorted on it. So uh, the things that you want to check are these diodes back here. There's four of them that are basically on the outputs of this transformer. This is in the, ba the power supply. Then the voltage comes over here and starts running the deflection. You want to check for bad solder on these two resistors. They get so hot, they literally come off the board. So you got to make sure the solder is good on that. It was, but I touched it up anyway. You want to check to see if the, the hot that we were just looking at is uh, shorted. It was not. You want to check to see if, let me get it brighter so you can see. These two diodes down here are shorted. They were not. Okay. And you want to check if any of these box caps, see how that's like a big, um, they call it a box cap. I guess it's film. You want to see if any of these are shorted. A lot of that stuff, people will tell you you can't, but you can test it in circuit because you're looking for a short. So like if this has a capacitance to it and it's in the circuit, if you measure from here to here, you shouldn't really get a short. If you do get a short, you may want to remove it and then check it out to make sure. But if, if I check it in there and I don't get a short, well then obviously it's not shorted. you know. So in most cases, you can check it in... Uh, for a short in circuit. None of these are shorted, but capacitors sometimes uh, change value whenever they get up to operating temperature or um, you know the voltage that they operate at. So it still could be a problem. These are known to be a problem on this chassis, these box capacitors. They just they dry out, they start acting up. So I, I changed the ones that I actually had replacements for. So uh, 0.39 microfarad capacitor. This one was a 3 nanofarad capacitor, 30 nanofarad capacitor. This one whoo, was a 0 0.012 microfarad capacitor. And then there was another one there that somebody had already replaced. Basically, you want to replace them with film capacitors. So that's what we've done with the exception of this one. Didn't have that one. Uh, theory being that as the capacitors get up the voltage, it's shorting or something, and that's what's causing the problem. Then the other thing that we changed was we went ahead and swapped the flyback. So this is, this is a replacement flyback. But all of the flybacks now are made in China. So you don't know what the life expectancy like is like on one. So you just want to look for anything wrong with it. See this glue that's kind of pulled up down here on the bottom? You usually don't get it like that. So I'm wondering if this thing got really hot. Now remember, the customer told us that there was a power surge. So maybe it fried the flyback. I haven't really seen that where that's a thing. Usually you can't hurt the flyback. They just fell on their own. It was my understanding that the only thing that can kill a flyback is itself. But I may be wrong about that. Okay, So we're going to uh, sw go ahead and swap the flyback. So uh, we've got that. And then we've got uh, one other clue here on the flyback. So, you know, there is a core that goes through it. And then there's wire wrapped around that core. Well, it is... really loose. Why is that so loose? Usually this clamp, you know, you might just be able to tighten the clamp and it's fine, but I don't think so. I think it's screwed up. It's definitely a newer one, but I think it may have just died. Um, that shouldn't be moving like that. And on our replacement one here, it's not moving, which is typically how they are. Leading me to believe that thing got really hot, so who knows. One other thing, there was a capacitor here that's a 47 microfarad 250 volt 
I went ahead and replaced it because the top had already domed. And these are not, these don't look like old capacitors to me at all. Um, normally, if it hadn't had the caps changed, you would go ahead and change it. So that does tie directly to the B plus and uh, the flyback and all that. Now that wasn't shorted. Nothing was shorted. And you can't really test the flyback without a ring tester. We don't have anything like that. But it doesn't look quite right. Yeah, so we're going to try a new flyback. The hot tests fine. Uh, we replaced that one capacitor, and then we replaced some of the box capacitors. We reflowed solder on the two big resistors that had uh, bad solder joints. And we're going to see if that gets our ticking to be solved. So we'll pop it back in the machine and see what we, see what we run into. Okay, folks, so that seems to have done it. We've had it running for about two hours, and it looks like everything's cool. It's a little bit discolored, um, but it, that's a degauss issue, but basically we've been moving this thing around in the, in the building while it's turned on. If you do that, you'll get discoloration on the edges and stuff. But it's got a pretty decent picture. Uh, we adjusted it out the best we can. On these hunting games, you kind of have to get them pretty bright sometimes depending on the setup of the game but most of the time if people have one of these they're trying to get it to work in like a uh, with a 25 inch they're trying to get it to work in a fighting game or something like that so if you have a Hanner X Polo that is not working and it's doing the tick of doom I give you a few things to look for in our case it appeared to be uh, the flyback even though it had been replaced it looked like that had went bad again I, I, what I, the guy said that it was after a power surge. I think there was something going on with the uh, uh, those box caps. I, I found some people on the killer list of video games, KLOV, talking about that they had ran into that issue before. When those box caps start getting old, they start doing things to the flyback that it doesn't like and will fry a flyback. So hopefully we've got that taken care of though. So. If you have a polo, hopefully this will give you a few things to look at. There is a flow chart floating around out there from Randy Fromm that kind of shows you some of the things to look at. That's what we always go by if uh, we're working on something. We start with his flow chart and it kind of gives you an area to look in. But hopefully that will help you uh, uh, check out a few things. And hopefully yours will be as simple as ours. Ours wasn't that bad, but it already had a cap kit done and things like that anyway. So give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave your comments down below if you know anything about these polos. What a great name. By the way, I checked it out. It was an Italian company. I always trust your first instincts, people. I thought it was an Italian company. So sorry to the Germans watching. Uh, Germany has created t tons of great stuff too, though, but they didn't create the Hanterex polo <laughs> monitor. We'll, we'll have to chalk that one up to the Italians. So uh, thank you for watching. If you want to support the channel, check out our website, lionsarcade.com. We uh, shows all the games we have for sale on there, and also the pinball machines, jukeboxes, stuff like that. And we have a parts page on there where uh, you can buy things that we use in our repairs from uh, uh, from us. Where and we also have like T-shirts and things like that on there. If you like the channel, coffee mug. <laughs> I wish I'd get one in here so I can show it whenever I do these videos. Um, so uh, make sure to check that out, lionsarcade.com. And while you're at it, check out our brother channel, My Brother Donnie, who is literally my brother. If you like watching us work on these old arcade games and pinball machines, you may like watching us work on old buildings. We're in an old building right now, actually. We've got plenty of stuff here we're working on. What do you think about all that? So uh, <laughs> make sure to subscribe to the channel, and we'll catch you on the next video. Go Hanterex Polo!